All right, we've finished our visual assets and we're ready to move on with design. But hold on there before you jump right into page layouts because responsive web design changes a lot of things. Our background reading, if you haven't already gone through these books, is Ethan Marcotte's Responsive Web Design and Luke Robleski's Mobile First. So what is this responsive web? Well, basically when we, when we started having a million different devices to design for, we started realizing that the things which looked good in our desktop layouts did not necessarily translate well into mobile. So a beautiful gridded desktop website required a zoom, a scroll, and a tap to get to just the next page. So responsive web design reflowing our layout to fit the container could make things just one click away. So we started to think more about grids and more about reflowing layouts and how they would be appropriate for each device. But then we also had to deal with the multiplicity of new hardware and new devices every month. So design process has changed as a result of this. I've moved to what I call Frankenstein layouts, which are combinations of all the main pieces on the page. Other people have talked about element collages, which are a similar idea. And it all comes from the fact that a site is so much more complex than our previous um, things. A poster you wouldn't need a style guide for. It's one thing, you're totally in control, you send it off to the printer and it's done. A book you had to start thinking about systems. You wanted a headline on one page to be the same style as a headline on another page. But sites are infinitely more complex. Content might be a promo on one page and then the full article on another page and then archived in another section. So, and we need to have systems for all these different type styles and purposes and devices now. So we had to start thinking about modular design, that we were able to focus on the pieces, but realizing that they were going to go into several different layouts. And some people came up with style tiles as a response to this. So they're a little bit more specific than a mood board. A mood board tends to get approved. People say, yes, I, I like it, let's do mood board B. But then when you would come back with the actual site layout, they would say, that's not what I was expecting. So a style tile was a little bit more specific where you would have an actual headline, you would have actual colors and images and buttons um, and UI assets on the page. Um, but it wasn't quite a full layout. Um, so these are a helpful step, but again, I think they're missing a little bit of specificity that helps um, both clients and us as designers figure out what, what our vision really is. So Dan Mall writes about element collages and how he started doing them, I think, on reading is fundamental. Um, and so here's an example of how he did them on the entertainment weekly redesign, that it's all the major pieces, even before you know any page layouts or page requirements, you know that you're going to have um, an image of a celebrity and you're going to have a heading. So you can design that section and the colors it might appear in. You might start to make some decisions that the magazines will appear silhouetted on a brightly colored background or what your buttons would look like, what your main sharing widgets would look like, what kind of icons you're going to use. So these are all the pieces together and as you can see it gives you a good idea of the personality of the website even before we're moving into layouts. And here's one that he did for TechCrunch, which you can see on the left is the full version. It's very long. He's really getting into detail about a lot of different um, pieces of the website. And on the right is up close, the sharing widgets, the tags, the titles, the most important pieces of the site. So element collages are not inspiration boards. Um, style tiles are not inspiration boards. You don't want to be screenshotting other stuff and pasting it into your layout because it's um, giving both the client and you a misguided perception of how far along in the process you actually are. Uh, you want to be doing these as your actual first drafts of the pieces of the design. So this is an inspiration board where I've collected some colors that I like, um, some typography inspiration, um, some user examples, um, just some photo styles. But then an element collage would be drawn from this. So I've started to turn that into real typefaces I might use, real color choices, um, showing how I might crop the photos, what, what, what font styles I might use. And there's no layout. You can see that these are just collaged on the page. You know, the client might say, this is a little floaty. They might, th see it's a lay they might think of it as a layout, but it's really just about you um, starting to design the various UI assets. 
So here's another example of where I moved from a style tile, which was helpful, and I did three of these, and they helped the client uh, get a sense of which color family um, they preferred, and um, I also did comps to match each of the style tiles. And then from that feedback, uh, they picked one style tile and, of course, a different comp, and so I collaged that um, into the next iteration was a Frankenstein layout. So I call it Frankenstein just because it's got, it's like three pages all in one, and in this case, it was actually, it was the home page plus a sign up form um, plus the user profile plus the merchant dashboard all in one so I was able to keep revising and polishing this design and then use it as um, my reference for all the subsequent pages throughout the site so the client understood that this was what all the pieces of their website were going to look like and I under I had a good frame of reference um, to look to make sure every subsequent page matched this initial Frankenstein page but remember the point of these. Why are we doing them? Um, you're trying to get feedback. So these are all um, different designers making up different types of deliverables that uh, serve the particular project and allow them to get the feedback they need at that point in time. Um, so a style tile is appropriate if you just want to know if they like your colors or not. A Frankenstein layout is more appropriate if you really want to want to get some design feedback without having to design a whole website. Um, if you work at an ad agency, yeah, they're gonna you're, you know you're gonna work with big clients and they're gonna want to see fully finished um, concepts for you know you might do three separate design website designs and two of them will get thrown away. But smaller scale clients and designers um, don't have time for that. So these are all um, attempts to get the feedback you need without having to do so much uh, work, wasted work. And then also it's good because you uh, start drafting these really important elements. So they'll end up with six and eight and 10 rounds of revision versus just your standard, you know, one mock-up and two rounds of revisions that a lot of design contracts are used to. Okay, so now we're going to design our Frankenstein layout. Uh, you're going to go design a mashup of your most important pages, so you start addressing all the elements. So in Sketch or Illustrator, um, you can start with your desktop artboard um, if you want to have fun with the most complex layout, or you can do your mobile artboard um, if you want to have the most constraints. So make a mock-up of, of your most important elements um, for your site. Uh, buttons, menus, tabs, headlines, paragraphs, call-outs, anything um, that's going to give you the best idea of, of how all those pieces are going to go together.